What's going on guys? CTA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to show you my Polymega Killer. Now I actually spent less money on this. It emulates more and it's just all around a better system than the Polymega will be. This video is not to hate on the Polymega. I have actually pre-ordered it. I love the idea of it. But the specs are a little lacking for a lot of the higher emulation that I like to do. So basically what we have here is a small form factor Dell Optiplex with an i3-4170 in it. Now if you search around on eBay you're going to find the 4160 versions of this. I actually swapped the i5 out, I used it for another system, and threw in an i3-4170 that I had laying around. If you're into retro gaming and emulation, you've already heard of the Polymega. If not, I'll give you a quick refresh. Company's putting out a nice little emulation machine. It's $249 for the base model. It will play disc-based PS1 games, Neo Geo CD, Sega Saturn, and PC Engine CD or TurboGrafx CD games. They also sell expansions to play real carts. Now with this unit here, we're obviously not going to be able to play real carts unless we get some kind of adapters. But I guarantee you there's a lot of people out there that aren't going to want to go out and buy carts, but they're still going to want the Polymega to emulate their games. And that will happen. If you've watched my channel, you've probably seen a recent video I did on building a super small form factor Ryzen 2200G powered emulation PC. Now to build this, right now as it sits, it was $540. It's not a good time to build PCs right now. If I would have just kept a regular size mid tower case, it would have cost me about $340 to build this, but I wanted to go small and it cost me a lot more to do that. So in this video, I want to show you a much cheaper alternative. Now you can get these on eBay or your local Craigslist for dirt cheap. I actually got two of them for free, but basically they run anywhere from $79.99 to $150 depending on your configuration. To get something similar to this right here without the GPU, it's going to be about $129 on eBay. I'll leave links in the description. We have 8GB of RAM, an i3, and a 500GB drive. It also comes with a pre-activated Windows 10 install and enough room for a GT1030 2GB GDDR5 GPU. Now the GPU itself is around $90. You could go with a different GPU, but I love these GT1030s. This is actually the second one I own. It's great for emulation, and it fits perfect in these small form factor cases. When it's all said and done, if I was to buy this machine here and the GPU, I would have about $225, $230 into this unit. This will do everything that the Polymega can do, plus some. This will do 3DS emulation, GameCube and Wii at 4K or over, Dreamcast at 4K, PS2, pretty much anything you want to throw at this, it will emulate it. Now I have not personally tested Wii U emulation on here, but I'm sure it'll handle some games. So let's go ahead, get this thing booted up, I want to show you what it'll do, and then we'll just talk a little more about it at the end of this video. Alright, so here we are. Working with the Intel i3-4170 at 3.7 GHz. Even a second generation i5-2400 will perform like this is going to. As long as you got something in the ballpark of 3 to 3.3 GHz, you should be good to go. I have 8 GB, dual channel 1600 MHz DDR3 RAM it came with this unit. The internal hard drive is 500 GB. I do have a 2 terabyte drive connected with my LaunchBox build on it. And the GPU I prefer using is the NVIDIA GT1030 DDR5 version. Now if you get the DDR4 version, it might work out pretty well, but I have seen in newer games, you can get up to a 30% gain if you're using the DDR5 version, so that's what I chose. So this PC is going to perform really well with all kinds of emulation. It'll do 3DS, GameCube, it'll do Dreamcast at 4K, it might even do some Wii U games. Now I haven't tested it, I'm not really big on Wii U emulation. Basically because I own a Wii U and I got everything I need on it. For the front end, I use Big Box. Now this is the paid version of LaunchBox, there is a free version, but there are also free front ends out there that you can use. This one's just really easy to set up and I prefer Big Box over pretty much anything else. There's a bunch of different themes that you can install for Big Box. I'm using the unified theme. There's tons on the website. If you go to the forum, you can download all of them. There's a lot of great ones out there, but I prefer using the unified theme right now. 
So with the Polymega, one of the big things is Sega Saturn emulation, and that's what I want to test out first on this PC because that's pretty much the highest end emulator that the Polymega is going to do. It does take a decent CPU to emulate Sega Saturn, and as you're about to see, this PC is going to handle it perfect. I'm using Manathan to emulate Sega Saturn here, and I just did a tutorial on my channel. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. Been experimenting with bezels here using Rocket Launcher. Not sure how I like them with this. It does cover up some of the screen. I can always get rid of them if I want to. One thing that the Polymega has over this is the ability to play from an original disc. Now we can kind of do that here with a PC. We'll just have to rip the disc and use the ISO or the bin and Q file. But I'm going to tell you right now, as soon as that thing releases, Sega Saturn game prices are going to skyrocket because the scalpers are out there and they know that people are going to want to get a hold of them to play them on that new Polymega. The next emulator a lot of people have been talking about is the Neo Geo CD emulator. Now, I'm not a big fan of Neo Geo CD. I absolutely love the AES and MVS, but I'm going to emulate it here for you using RetroArch as soon as I can find it. I just got so much stuff in this build right now, and I haven't added everything yet. We'll go right into Neo Geo CD. I still need to get some of these clear banners downloaded. It's a work in progress. I mean, by the time I'm done, I'll probably have around a six terabyte build of LaunchBox with everything I'll ever need. One of the big reasons I've never been big on the Neo Geo CD is the loading times. Even using an emulator, it still takes a little while to load some of these games. So as you can see, it's handling it very well. I mean, we're getting a constant 60 FPS. I don't notice any sound issues, any glitching going on. These Optiplexes just perform really well for emulation. Now for the next tests I'm about to show you, I'm just going to kind of run through it real quick. I'm not going to go through the menus and select each game. We're going to skip right through. I'll tell you exactly what emulator I'm using and what game is playing. So this is GameCube. I'm running the Dolphin emulator. It's set at 1080p. This Optiplex paired with the GT1030 is capable of doing GameCube and Wii at or over 4K. I just, I can only capture in 1080p, so I figured I'd set it at 1080p. It still looks so much better than an original GameCube though. Next up, we have Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator. Again, this is capable of running Dreamcast games at 4K and over. This is the original Soul Calibur game, and it looks beautiful at this resolution. Want to play some PS2 games? It'll do it. This is using PC SX2 running Devil May Cry 3. Sticking with the PlayStation theme, PSP, Gran Turismo, I've had a hard time emulating this on a lot of other lower end devices. It runs at full speed here, 60 FPS, 
I'm using PPSSPP and you might notice a little jittering in the background. I've never been able to get rid of this on any system I've ever emulated this game. This is at the highest settings in PPSSPP. It's going to run everything. And finally, I'll go back to some Sega with some Naomi emulation. We're going to go with Street Fighter 03. For this emulator, I'm actually using RetroArch along with Raycast or Recast, however you want to pronounce it. It works really well with Naomi games and Dreamcast games. It's recently been updated. It's a great emulator, but I just prefer using ReDream for Dreamcast. And for any of the obscure Sega arcade systems, I'll use Raycast. Alright, so that's pretty much it here, guys. I didn't show off any really lower-end systems like PlayStation, you know, SNES, NES, Game Gear, Sega Master System, Sega Mega Drive. It's going to do those perfectly. I kind of wanted to tackle the higher-end stuff, you know, stuff that the Raspberry Pi can't do, the stuff that lower-end PCs can't do. As you can see, it does GameCube, it does PSP, it does Dreamcast, it does PS2. It'll even emulate 3DS using Citra. Now, like I mentioned, I haven't tested Wii U on here. If you guys are really interested in it, I can probably make another video with some other emulators. Let me know what you want to see in the comments below. And in the next few days, I can probably put something together. I want to make this perfectly clear. I am not hating on the Polymega whatsoever. I actually pre-ordered one myself, the base unit, $249. As soon as I get it, I'm going to be testing all kinds of stuff on it. Looking at the specs, it's definitely going to perform like they state it's going to perform, and it's actually going to do even more than that. As soon as somebody hacks it, it's running Linux, so it's going to be pretty easy to hack. There will be tons of other emulators added to the unit, I can guarantee you that. But overall, the way the specs look right now on the Polymega, this is going to outperform it. So at the very top, we have the Intel Pentium Gold G5500T at 3.2 GHz. This is what's going inside of the Polymega. It will use less power than the other i3 CPUs that I'm about to show you, but overall we get better performance out of the CPU I have, which is in the bottom left hand corner, the i3-4170 at 3.7 GHz. If we take a look at the average CPU mark, 5189. Since we're dealing with older emulators, a lot of them only rely on one core, so single threaded rating right underneath the average CPU score. On the Polymega's G5500T, 1878. On the i3-4170, 2139. And on the i3-4160, which is what you're going to find in a lot of these Optiplexes on eBay for cheap, it scores a 2076. Now the margin of error for that G5500T is very high because they don't have many benchmarks going on. But for the older 4th generation i3s here, there's been tons of benchmarks, so the margin of error is very low. We're getting a decent score. Both of these CPUs are more powerful than the Polymega's G5500. Now this is all CPU scores. We also need to deal with the GPU on newer games and newer emulators. A lot of them use OpenGL or DirectX 11 or even Vulkan. If you're using a 750Ti low profile, you're around three and a half to four times more powerful than the built-in GPU on the Polymega, which is an Intel UHD 630. And if you're using a GT 1030 DDR5 version, you're two to three times more powerful than the built-in GPU on the Polymega. Now this really depends on what kind of tests you're running, but overall, the 750Ti or the GT 1030 is gonna outperform that UHD 630 in pretty much everything.
So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I've been wanting to make this video since the Poly Mega pre-orders went live because I have a lot of these Optiplexes laying around and I believe in them. I love these little things. I use them for everything and I can pick them up dirt cheap on my local Craigslist. I just keep a notification going. If I see one for 30 to 50 bucks, I'll go ahead and buy it, even if it's got an older i3 in it. If you're interested in building a similar system like you just saw in this video, I will leave eBay links in the description. I'm also going to leave a few Amazon links for GPUs and things like that. Remember, you might not find that 4170 that was out of another system, but the 4160 performs almost exactly the same. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and like always, thanks for watching.